All right, so this video is going to be covering chapter 9, section 2, which is ideal stoichiometric calculations. And this video is mostly going to be examples of various ideal stoichiometric calculations. So if you understood completely what was going on at the end of the last video, uh, you can probably skip over this one. However, uh, I just want to clarify something. Uh, stoichiometric calculations and chemical equations in general uh, model stuff under what are known as ideal conditions. That is where everything reacts completely. Now in the real world you're not going to have uh, all your reactants combined to form a product or whatever. There's always going to be a few that bind, most that bind together or break apart, whatever you're doing. However, there's still going to be a few extra that never really uh, combine. They're sort of still floating in the solution or mixed together or what have you. Now that said, throughout this course we're only going to be dealing with uh, ideal calculations. Uh, and let's hop into it right now, starting with the most simple example, which is where you are given a certain molar amount of one compound in a reaction and you're asked to find a molar amount of a different compound within that reaction. So I'll start by just writing a generic uh, synthesis reaction. For example, let's say 3 of element X plus 2 of element Y yields uh, 6 of element XY. Let's say you're given that you start the reaction with 2 moles of X. How much XY will you end up with in moles. So what you do is you simply take the amount you're given, which is the two moles of X, then you multiply by the uh, molar ratio between the two, that is the three and the six, and remember you want to have them cancel out, so the moles of X go on the bottom, and there's three moles of X for every six moles of XY and then when you solve after canceling your units then you get four moles of x y. So in instances like this where you're going from one molar amount to another molar amount you simply take the given and then use the molar ratio with the given on the bottom so that the givens cancel out and you'll end up with uh, your required molar amount on top and then it's just simple arithmetic from there. Going one step further we're now going to be converting a known molar amount to an unknown mass amount. However what this doesn't indicate to you is that what you really do during the calculation is you go from one molar amount to another molar amount then to the mass amount. That is you go from the given molar amount to the molar amount of whatever unknown compound you're trying to find, which is what we just did, and then you take this and you convert it to mass using the molar mass of the substance. So let's take a simple equation like uh, hydrogen combusting to form uh, water. You would first, let's say you were given that there are four moles of hydrogen that go into the reaction and you want to find out how many grams of water you will end up with. So you start out with the given, again, four moles of hydrogen and then you multiply by a molar ratio to figure out uh, the amount of oxygen you'll need. And again, you do this just by using the coefficients. So you write out two and two and you'll notice these cancel so you can cross them out immediately and then once you've canceled these units you'll notice that these numbers will simplify to a mole amount of water in a reaction so then you just have to multiply by the molar mass of water which for one mole of water is 18.02 grams you cancel out the units you do 4 times 18 and you end up with 
72.08 grams of water. It's almost exactly the same, same steps as last time where you're using dimensional analysis with canceling units in diagonal pairs like this to end up with your desired quantity over here in the answer. Now the next type of problem is simply the reciprocal of this where you are given a certain mass and you want to find a molar amount of a different substance. And just like the one we did before, there's really a hidden step in here that is just included in your final calculation where you go with one intermediate molar step in between because again the molar ratio that is the ratio between uh, how many moles of each element or compound rather are used up or created in the reaction is the most important conversion factor when uh, doing reaction stoichiometry so let's say we have water this time we'll do decomposing into hydrogen and oxygen. So let's say you started with 36.04 grams of water. You would then multiply by its molar mass to get a molar amount. Again, that's the intermediate step right here. So water weighs 18.02 grams for each mole. And then let's say you were trying to find the uh, number of moles of oxygen that you would end up with. You simply multiply by the molar ratio of oxygen to water. In this case, for every two moles of water, you get one mole of oxygen gas. And then if you do some canceling, you get the correct units, which is good. As well, these numbers are pretty easy. You end up with exactly one mole of oxygen after doing the math. Again, I can't stress how important these canceling units are. They're also a very good way if you don't know the exact formula for how to set up, let's say, a mole to mass versus a mass to mole problem. They're a very good way for figuring out how you're going to go through the problem step by step just by taking the units and canceling them as you go through until you eventually get to the correct units at the end and that's when you know that you'll be able to get the right answer. Finally we're going to be moving on to the most complex uh, stoichiometric calculations you're going to be getting to which are where you start with a given mass and you're asked to find and unknown mass. But again, none of these cal calculations are super complex as long as you uh, cancel the units and know the steps in between. So you're going to be going from a massive amount to a molar amount and then using this molar amount to convert to a molar amount of the unknown. So this is going to be going you know, given, given, and then using the molar ratio, then you get to uh, dealing with the unknown compound and finally ending with the mass of the unknown compound uh, using its molar mass. So for this last uh, type of problem I figure we'll use a more complex problem because it's a more complex uh, idea. So we're going to take the reaction of tin which is represented by SN and hydrofluoric acid to yield uh, tin, fluoride, and hydrogen. Now just like the problems before it, we go through the process given above. And even if you don't have the process memorized, which I don't, it's very easy to figure out based on the units. So let's say you start off with 30 grams of hydrofluoric acid. So we'll put on the left over here what is given, 30 grams of HF and then you multiply by its molar mass which is one mole of HF is uh, 20.01 grams of HF and you can again see that these units will cancel out so you're on the right track then you have to move on to getting a molar amount 
of your unknown. And to do this, you again derive the mole ratio from the coefficients of the various uh, items you're trying to use. So for each mole of hydrogen fluoride, or every two moles rather, because it has a coefficient of two in front of it, you yield uh, one mole of tin fluoride. And then finally, because these units will cancel out, all you have to do is can uh, cancel out this molar amount of tin fluoride into a massive amount. And you do that again by using its molar mass. And tin fluoride has a molar mass of 156.71 grams for each mole. So now that all the units have canceled and you have the desired unit at the end, which is in grams, once you do all the math and canceling and what have you, you end up with 117.5 grams of tin fluoride.